Hello and welcome to another video on ECG. I am Dr. Vajesh Chibir. I have done residency in cardiology. This is the ECG which we are going to discuss today. But before starting the discussion, as always, pause your videos, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself, and at the end of the video, compare your findings with what was discussed on this ECG. So let's begin the discussion. One thing which is quite evident by looking at this 12 lead ECG is that there is obvious tachycardia on this ECG. If we calculate the heart rate, we can see that heart rate is about 300 and 150 beats per minute. So this is a tachycardia with heart rate around 150 beats per minute now the next thing is we have to determine that whether it is a broad complex tachycardia or narrow complex tachycardia so for this we will look at the duration of qrs complex for example if you look at the duration of qrs complex in lead v2 or lead v1 you can note that the duration of QRS complex is more than three small scale or 120 millisecond in this case. So this is a broad complex tachycardia at heart rate of about 150 beats per minute. There are multiple differentials of broad complex tachycardia. Which include supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy, atrial fibrillation with aberrancy, atrial flutter with aberrancy, ventricular tachycardia. To differentiate between these differentials, we have to determine whether this is a regular tachycardia or irregular broad complex tachycardia. So, if we look at the QRS complexes, the RR intervals are almost regular. So, this is a broad complex regular tachycardia. So, our differential is now narrowed down to supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy, atrial flutter with aberrancy or ventricle tachycardia. So to differentiate between these two, between these entities, uh, we will now look at the presence or absence of AV dissociation. If we look at lead V1, we can see that there is a P wave before each QRS complex. There is P wave before each QRS complex, which means that there is no AV dissociation, which rules out the ventricular tachycardia as diagnosis. So we are left with sinus rhythm, sinus tachycardia, or SVT, or atrial flutter with aberrancy. Again, if we look at lead AVL, we can see our retrograde P wave. Similarly, there is a P wave before each QRS complex. Similar is the case in lead AVR where there is a upright P wave or atrial wave before after QRS complex and a P wave or atrial wave before the QRS complex. So this is basically a 2 into 1 atrial flutter with aberrancy. Now, what kind of aberrancy is present in this case? We can see that there are small R wave followed by S wave and tall R wave in lead V1. Here you can see that there is a small R wave followed by S wave and there is a tall R wave. So, as we know from um, our previous videos, that a broad QRS complex with present of R, S, R morphology in lead v1 means that this is a right bundle branch block 
Now next is the axis. If we look at lead one, the QR direction of QRS complex is upwards. While the QRS complex is directed downward in lead AVF. So this is a left axis deviation. In normal cases where there is right bundle branch block, we expect our normal or vertical or right axis deviation. But here in this case, there is right bundle branch block with left axis deviation. So this is basically due to left interior fascicular block. As you can see that there is small small Q with tall R in lead AVL while there are small R and deep S waves in lead 2, 3 and AVF. So this is a this is an atrial flutter with 2 into 1 AV block. There is right bundle branch block and there is left anterior fascicular block. This is all for today. Hopefully you like the video. For more videos on ECG, kindly subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. Allah Hafiz and take care till next time.